everyone, welcome back to Obscura Sleeper Presents. All right, everyone, let's do the mind warp again. Pop quiz. Someone tells you that they want to do a movie under the Fangoria title, and the stars of said film are Bruce, Evil Dead Campbell, and Angus the Tall Man Scrim. Does it sound awesome? Hell yeah! That's the good news. The bad news? The movie is mind warp. Otherwise known as Brain Slasher, Mind Warp is a little bit like The Matrix if it were stupid and direct to VHS. Our main character is Judy. She lives in a world where people live virtual lives and only wake up to eat and do their business. Judy finds herself wanting more and ends up banished to the surface, where she discovers that living in the real world is hard and stuff. She meets Bruce Campbell and a bunch of orcs, and an hour and a half later you feel like money is owed to you. We begin now. This is the first shot of the movie. Fitting metaphor? This is our introduction to Infinisynth, the company behind the virtual reality world that people are living in due to the kinda sorta nuclear holocaust. Book into the happiness system. Relax. Imagine. Enjoy. Book in. Bullshit. This is Judy. I hope you like whining. Judy. Judy. It's your duty, duty, to shake that booty, booty. Judy is arguing with the systems operator, an unknown figure who runs the Infinisynth system. Judy wants no part of this virtual world because she wants to experience something real. If you don't understand this point now, don't worry, she spends the first 15 minutes of the film whining about it. I want to do something. I want to go somewhere. I mean, here. I want to stay awake. I want something real. All I want is There's something real. So Judy unplugs herself and spends her time doing push-ups and listening to her CD player. Ah, this. The future. Judy is living in the same room as her mother, who is a fascinating and well-developed character. Talk? Well, that's why we have Infinisynth, honey. Oh, did I say fascinating and well-developed? Judy asks about her father, and her mother mentions that he disappeared one day, and she never heard from him again. Then she hooks back up to the computer from the future. I'm awake, Mom. <gasps> Three points. We also get to see her super cool dream sequence. Super cool! Wake up. Wake up! Mom. Mother. Please wake up. Mom. Okay, so just to establish things, we're ten minutes into the movie, and I believe Judy wants to talk to someone. I could be wrong, though. Judy decides to mess with her mom's program, and this goes swimmingly. Time to wake up, Mom. Er. Because she messed with the system, the architect, I mean systems operator, takes her offline and she discovers that her mother is dead for real. No! Well, Judy is kidnapped by some masked men and wakes up in the real world buried in the dirt. Because, I don't know, they just wanted to mess with her. Did they think she wouldn't escape the loose dirt or something? She finds several skeletons strapped to crosses. Symbolism. What is this place? Acting! Judy wanders around for a bit before coming across some quicksand. Yeah, because that's the kind of climate you find quicksand in. How is there quicksand if the world froze over? She's rescued by some crawlers, orc-like creatures that are basically what humans have become due to the nuclear soil and their habit of eating human flesh. Because that's what cannibalism does, it makes you mutate. <laughs> it doesn't have to make sense. Oh, I like the crawlers already. So that's what happened to Leatherface. Huh, what happened? Oh shit. Alright, something can happen. I won't mind movie, really. How did he get under the ice? Did he just wait there until it froze over again? I'm pretty sure you can't do that. I regret I have but one life to give. <sighs> She's swift like a fox. I guess not. Bruce Campbell! Yay! Oh yeah! Bruce rescues Judy and takes her back to his place. Who are you? 
My name's Stover. You may be familiar with my chocolates. Stover discovers where Judy comes from, and she asks if he knows the way back to Infinisynth. Well, I figure it's out someplace past the Deadlands. But there's no way through there. Why not? The sickness hits you. Brain sickness. Oh, right. You can't get through there because of... brain sickness? To make the exposition slightly shorter, Stover explains that his ancestors never went to Infinisynth, while Judy's ancestors forgot there was an outside world. Everyone's pretty much dead, except for the cannibals, and the world sucks now. Judy continues to whine. There we go. That's great. Comedy! This is reminding me of something. What is it? Stover explains that he put the bodies on the crosses to keep the crawlers from finding them and eating them. Because the best way to hide the bodies so they won't be found is to prop them up really high in the middle of nowhere so they're easy to see. Family? My family's dead. Just give me that. Um, I guess we missed the part where he said something offensive. It can be beautiful here. It's safe now. The sun's low. Filtered through more atmosphere. Any other time. He's a glass half full kind of guy. What have you. This is pretty. It's my wedding ring. Bad time. I haven't been with a woman since she died. I thought I was the last human on earth. What about the other people you put on the crosses? Ah, never mind. His Campbell senses are tingling. <laughs> Judy is taken to this gender ambiguous child. Can you please tell? Uh, what? Oh, the shock! What is this guy's job exactly? To stare disapprovingly? Judy meets Cornelia, whose job is to run the hatchery and act crazy. Nothing can compare with. Nothing can. Program glitching. Must reboot. They discover Judy is from Infinisynth, and she promises them salvation if they set her free. Well, my little brain screw bitch. Does change a few things. Acting! Meanwhile, Stover has been put to work. Mining junk? <laughs> Jesus! Jeez, guy! <laughs> yeah, imagine if he lost his hand. He'd have to replace it with a chainsaw or something. Claude, you must help me. Claude, you must! I must do it! I must do it! So Cornelia plans to infect Judy with the sickness everyone on the surface seems to have. Why they just happen to have this sickness lying around to put in syringes is anybody's guess. Oh! You are a tough little bitch, aren't you? Wow, she never took into account that she might struggle. Stover manages to get away using a blade he found in an old blender. Judy convinces Claude to set her free at the same time. How dramatically convenient! <laughs> Well, I guess not that convenient. So just to recap, Judy has so far been captured and escaped three times in this movie. What is this? Season three of Heroes? Let go, you idiot! Idiots. Hey. The crawlers have no dialogue in this movie. They seem to communicate through grunts mostly. I can't imagine how an average conversation goes. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid surprised pork. <laughs> then Bruce goes evil dead on their asses. Hey, the nostalgia critic's gonna be wanting that back, you know. So Judy, Claude, and the Yorks gather around the seer, who tells them what the junk they found is used for. He generally just makes shit up, kind of like an evil scuttle. Save this offering. We are not ready for it yet, but someday it will increase our power. Break open the casing. Inside is a small motor. Remove it, it may be useful. What about that one? Junk. How are things back at home? Uh, how could you be part of this? What, she didn't realize he wasn't an orc? Because of his convincing mask? The seer does creepy shit and decides Claude needs to be made an example of. Meanwhile, Stover gets a foolproof disguise. Yeah, that ought to do it. Oh shit, the seer's stingray! What stingray have eyeballs in a fish tank for? So that's Kool-Aid's secret. We are part of the dream. It's a dream. It's only a dream. No. 
It's not. And so we drink to our homies. Bring me the girl. You probably should have kept that, but whatever. Surprise, surprise, Stover gets captured. Judy and the Seer get some quality time when the Seer reveals who he is. Yes, Judy, I am your father. Her father says that he was exiled from Infinisynth and convinced the crawlers that he could change their world. My little show must seem tawdry to you after Infinisynth. But these rituals are all these people have to look forward to. I mean, it was either this or have them live a prosperous, happy life. Come on, put yourself in my shoes. Judy, I've wanted to die countless times. I've denied myself the pleasure. You can't kill the tall man, Judy. I've seen him unmelt. Stover gets put in the water with a bunch of angry fish. No! They'd been living in the landfill for some time before I came, but they'd forgotten what any of this was for. I've helped him to remember, to use it as a foundation for the future. Yeah, um, can we get past the evil orc dictator training video here? Sova! What have you done to him? Judy's father explains that the fish burrow inside the host's brain and lay eggs. And then he suggests that he and Judy do it to repopulate the world. So things are looking up. We've not been exposed all our lives to all the poisons and diseases that the crawlers and the outworlders have carried for years. Yeah, I'd hate for those incest babies to come out mutated or something. You will bear my children. No! Oh. <laughs> Yay, Cornelia! Aww. Disapproving orc approves. Judy sets Stover free and he's got fish eggs in his brain, so we know everything's gonna be a okay. I'll make sure one of us is dead before you ever touch me. That won't be necessary. Did they really just do the sound? I never imagined I could devour my own child, but I can. There's a line you don't hear every day. He throws her toward the choppy thing, but her jacket gets caught and saves her. Oh, and uh, this happens. Sweet. While Stover fights the Seer, his baseball bat is knocked down and Judy manages to jam the fan with it. Oh bullshit, that thing can chop through human bones like nothing. A wooden bat wouldn't stop it. No. Wait, did he suddenly get phantasm hair in just that shot? You want me to cooperate? Ha 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 ha! So the seer is dead. The movie's over now, right? Of course not. There's even more misery to spread. Fruit punch party! So anyway, remember those fish eggs nesting in Stover's brain? Well, now he's gone crazy! Yup! He takes his pimp goblet and makes a toast, declaring Judy the new seer. She doesn't seem keen on the idea. No, Judy. I love you. I don't see the problem here, Judy. Then this happens. <laughs> Gross. What's wrong, Judy? Why aren't you hooked in? None of it. None of it was real. Bullshit! You're gonna go that route, movie? Really? Is it really like that on the outside? I wouldn't know. I've never been there. What? But you. But the systems operator was her father? How does that make sense? Judy agrees to become the new systems operator. Bullshit. He just admitted to you the whole thing was just made up to jerk you around. This is bullshit. Judy wakes up to reveal her father's ashes resting on the windowsill. That was made up too? How did she not notice those before? How? That was mind warp. Was it worth it? Eh, uh, yes and no. There are some interesting ideas here, but overall, when the movie isn't gross, it's just boring. Not to mention the whole thing turned out to have been a dream, basically, so none of the characters have actually moved forward in any way since the beginning of the film. Bruce Campbell is good here, but I'd only recommend it for hardcore fans. Next week, I'm gonna review something a little cheerier. Something with color. And those colors are red, white, and blue. The Adventure. The Confrontation.
the code. I will honor the code, Father. The invasion. The final hour. The deadliest art of the Orient is now in the hands of an American. American warrior. Surprised Ark. <clears throat> I don't know what that was.